We're here to solve this Japanese sums battleships puzzle by John Bolton called Yamato. As a Sunday stumper, it's going to be pretty tough, is our guess. The battleship rule won't do too much until we start to mark some of these unshaded cells. We'll particularly do these diagonal clues, and as ships start to extend, we'll do this. So let's really view this as a Japanese sums puzzle, and uh, just remember the battleship step every time we put in a black cell. It's a 1 to 9 grid, so maximum sum of 45. I'm seeing a sum of 45 here. I'm seeing some sums that are large-ish, like this is uh, 40, this is actually 44 is pretty interesting, just missing the digit 1, also 44 missing the digit 1, this is 42, so missing 1 and 2 or 3, but 4 clues is probably going to be constraining. Uh, this is 43, so missing just the digit 2. Uh, this is 42, 1, 2, or 3, so not yet as constrained. This is 44, these are 45, so the most constrained rows and columns are the ones I've marked, and these on the edges, which are both 45, this bottom row and rightmost column, look the most key. That's because we've got 11 cells in the grid, all nine numbers have to appear, and there are going to be gaps between these clues. So the 19 must start in the leftmost cell, take at least 3. The 12 must start here, take at least 2. The 20 must start here, take at least 3. The 2 is here, finishes, and then the 23 must start immediately and take at least 3. So this is a start to the grid. Working off some of these clues, this 2 comes over. This cell has to be uh, off because we've got a 1 right beneath. And one thing that does is as we mark in some of these battleship required cells, this question mark clue is referring to everything else in this column. So unless we have a super long battleship, and actually that would require having all these cells in white, um, we're going to have to take some more cells coming down here. How will that actually work? We could have this cell, this cell, or this cell as the last that is uh, the space between these groups, and that means we'll always have at least a number down to here, and the stretch will always kind of come to, to there. So not standard logic, but it's useful with the new battleships to put in. Um, this has to be part of a five sum, but can't take three cells for that, so these actually get marked off, and this becomes a five straight away. Um, this is now 13 coming up with seven to go. With the two at the top, it can only be one, six, or three, four. And must end immediately. So this is white, this is white. That actually means this whole, this column has nine numbers in it, so all the other numbers will appear. Um, 15's got to come over and take another digit, and actually 39 has to take at least six. So you know this. Um, 14 has to take a cell in the middle here. This clue, 20, is going to take at least four. Um, the most interesting thing I think now is actually the interplay of these clues. So we've got a five over here that's a singleton, so this five has to be part of a double. And it can't be two of three because that would remove all the options for this. So this five is part of one with four. And notice this cell can't be taken because this has to be um, when we take two cells part of that five group. That means one of these is a three. And there's a 15 that's over there. So we've got these marked in. These diagonal to a new cell must again be numbers from the battleship rule. This cell being marked is now giving an extra degree of freedom for the 6 clue, but it's taking one away from the 11, 7, 18. So let's look at the rest here. We've got 8 cells left in this group, and we've got a 3 with a 1 with a 2 as minimums, and with 2 gaps between, that's going to be forced. So this is 3, 1, and 2, with this being a 7. 3 numbers that sum up to 18, 2 numbers that sum up to 11. These are marked off because of the battleship rule, and actually 21's got to come over again. 21's got to come over again. Uh, 29's got to come over uh, at least 4, 12's got to come over here, 27's got to come down again, but now to get 3 groups we need to have marked these off, that marks this in. Um, that This cell being marked off is good, it actually forces this to be the 1, 4, which is going to mark this in, mark this off, mark this in, make the 3 sit right here, battleships rules, put these in. One thing we're going to see is even in these unclued rows, we start to get close to nine cells marked. In this case, we have exactly nine cells marked, so those mean all the numbers are present. Um, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one thing we can't do is mark this off and make it go to ten. So this is an extreme uh, curious constraint of the battleship's rule, but we can't take a diagonal cell that would mark too many in. So that's uh, potentially interesting there. Uh, we've got 22 and 15, so this is going to have to be the two for this to work, and marking that in marks these off as white cells. Let's see if we've got some others we know. Um, we've got only one more of these we can take in this row, and it looks like if we actually 
uh, came down here. We're going to have some limits on the bottom quickly, pretty quickly with how we get up to 14. So could come from looking at these columns. 26, 5, 11 looks like a good set to look at. That 26 has to be 4 long, which could be here. The 5 can be on its own, and the 11 right here. So that is four straight away from the progress we've made uh, to that moment. That being part of the 14 puts the black in here to separate these. Uh, this row now has 9 in green, so this has to be a ship. That marks this off. This row now also has 9 in green, so this has to be a ship. Let's come back to this third column. To make this be 5, 10, this is the 5, this is part of the 10, this has to be marked off, this marked in, this marked off. These are from the battleship cornering. I see now 8 in this, uh, sorry, 9 actually in this column, so the remaining ones have to both be ships. These come in, this makes this row now have 9, so these get marked in. Uh, what more do we know? 29 can get out to six cells, but not to seven cells. Can I get, no, it could be one through six and then eight, so it could take the cells. We don't know that yet, but 15 has to come down and potentially take these. So it may come from looking at the remaining clues up top. 22, for instance, has to be three cells, has to take this. We may want to be asking, here it is, 28 has to be four cells and have the separation. So this now is part of the 15. It's going to need this gap and the cell for a 3. We've got 9 in the center column, so we can mark this and this as ships, and that actually means this is forced to be taken, leaving a 9 to get the right number of groups. That marks in this cell, and now this column has nine, so this must be taken. This is left open. Um, this has to come over for the 22 to work. We should ask now, so this column is missing one, and it also has six digits for 987654, so this has to be a two-digit sum. If one's not in it, it's two of three, and it takes that cell. This top row is missing the digit one as well, and we've got eight numbers marked, so this can't be taken. We're going to have a 9 in here, and have a 5 here, and that's going to actually mean there's a 7, 6 across the top, and 8, 4 over here. So now we've got all ships placed, now we're just really thinking through numbers, and this is going to be pretty hard uh, arithmetic puzzle, but let's see if we can get through it. This 28 is still interesting for me because this has to be at least a 4 higher, and so this sum looks pretty challenging. If this is a 9, actually, 1, 2, 3 is required, but 3 is already down here, so 9 is out. And actually, with 6 or 7, 6 with 7 doesn't work, so this has to be 4, 5. And so that means all these cells are 6, 7, 8, 9 as range. And if we even take some of these extremes, um, we'll likely have a case where we have to put both a 1 and 2 in the space. So let's say we don't put a 1, 2 in the space, then we have 4 with a 5 with a 6. So we need a 2. We need a 1, those go here. And so now let's look at if we've got valid values for the remaining sets. So 6 would have to go with 6, that's no good. 7 can go in here, has to go with 5. So it's a little bit roundabout, but I think we've arrived at where we know we've got 7 with 5 and 1 and 2 from tricky math. We've got a 6, 9 pair at the top. We actually have a 9 here as well, so look at that. We've got two 9s we know on this column and a 9 here. We do stuff with 9s below. This will be 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, but this sum is drawing my attention. It no longer can take a 9 in it, so this has to be 6, 8, 6, 8. The cell above will be a 3 or 5 for that sum of 11, and the 6 isn't available at that time, so this is 3, 8, 6. That cancels this to be 9, 6. It means this is 8, this is 9, this is 6. That cancels the 6 here and means this is just 7, 8 coming across. That was hard, but we've got some good progress there. This is 15 with 11 to go. This will have to be 4, 7, 4, 7. Do we get more in any of these rows we can use? Um, not immediately. Place some down here. Actually eliminated the 6. That means this is 3, 4 coming straight up. Um, if this is a 3, that's an 8. If this is a 4, that's a 7. So this is 7, 4, 3. Gives us 8, 7. Remaining set here is 1, 6, 7, 9, so this could be 1 or 7. 
Um, this could be one or six, which is nine or four. So it's actually four, six. So nine for sure is in these cells. Uh, one would go with eight, but we also know one isn't in this row. So this has to be seven with these as ones. It means this is a two. It means this is a three, four. These having fours means there's always a four in the sum. That leaves behind 14. You can't then have a three here. Like this would look really bad. So this is four, three, four, eight. The sum gets finished with a six. Uh, to get to 11, the remaining options look to just be two with nine. And I've got a two in the top row. So two is below, nine is above. Get a sum of six and two. With two, four removed, this is one over five. The remaining cells in the space are two, three, nine. So this is two, nine. 239, 239. What do we have here? We have two. Sorry, we've got a sum of 40, so we're missing five and two numbers. So two and three are gone. So this is 158. This already we know above is a five. So this is a 18. This is 29, but nine's already there. So this has to be the one. So this now becomes 58. This now is a sum of 12. We've got 17 to go, which is this 9, 8. That leaves behind 3, 4, 7. This is 3, 7. This is 3, 4. Just getting some pairs here. For instance, we've got these two 8s. Um, that should be forcing on this sum. So there's an 8, 9 with this 4, 3. That leaves behind a 3 here. And there's a 5 with an 8. So to make this sum work, we have to take this value, which is now putting a 7 in the cell. That means there's a 4 here, a 7 here, a 3, and a 4. That 1 means this is a 4 with a 1. All the 9s above mean a 9 is here, and this is 2, 3, 2, 3 coming across. We have a 1 to still place in the space. We have a 2 to place in this column. We've got a 6 to go there. Uh, for this sum to work, so we said this column is missing a 2, so this has to be 3 on the left, 2 over here. This has 6, 7, 8 to go, so this is 6, 7, 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, 8. Where do we have any more sums that aren't finished? Like, we've got some sums in the space, so we might as well try to use them. Uh, this looks like it's going to have some constraints when we really think about it. So it's missing the digit three in this row. And it's going to probably be tied to knowing nine. If this is a six, then it's got to go seven or eight. It's going to be larger than this value. This has to be one above and six down below. And uh, whatever this takes, it's going to leave behind a sum of 10. So eight would go with two. That's no good. Six or seven goes with three or four. Uh, but we said this row doesn't have a three in it. So this is or is that right? No, this doesn't have an 8 in it. Um, so this will be 3, 7, or 6, 4, and this will be 5 with 3, 7, or 6, 4. So there's a 5 over here. Um, this is actually a 3, 5 cell. Uh, this is a 3, 4, 5. This is a 6, 7 cell. So this could be a 4, 5 cell because we've got the 6, 7 pair. Probably going to need to do some digit eliminations and kind of finish spaces. So this is like 1475. So this is 15. It's the most constrained in that group. Um, this has to actually now be 1 over 9. That means this is a 5. Uh, this is just 3, 6. This is just 3, 8. This is just 6, 8. This column has all the numbers, so it needs a 9. That 9 has to be here. So that leaves 6, 7, 8. This row has all the, sorry, this column has all the numbers. So we need a 1 in these spaces, but we also need a 2. 2 has to go here, 1 goes here. This now 3, 5, 8. Only 5 available here. Puts in this 3, puts in this 8. This 5, sorry, this 3 means this is 5, 7. And 4, 6, that's going to complete these. Uh, we have 4, 6, 9 to go in this row, and 6 and 9 are there. 1 and 7 to finish this full column. This is 4 and 5 to finish this full row. Uh, this needs 9 and 6 to complete, so 6 over 9. 6 puts an 8, puts in 6. 
put us in three. This can be seven or four, but four is in the column, and this can be six only, and we're through the grid. So some complex math in the middle, but hopefully you got some fun from the unique empty cell placement steps using the battleship rule, and then uh, got your thinking caps on to do all the math. Math is always my strongest suit, but hopefully you got enough from watching me piece through the video and seeing some of the constraints with sums here, things like uh, pairs of nines limiting other clues. There's a lot of communication across and through the grid. So really good puzzle, John. Thanks for submitting it, and thanks for you all for getting through this video. We'll see you again soon.